All right, check it out. We got a Tiffin in the uh, Soda Solar work area, driveway, whatever <laughs> we're calling it uh, today. Shop. Actually, the shop. And uh, we're doing an upgrade to a system. Actually, the, wow, check this out. That's pretty cool. Uh, we're doing an upgrade to a system that Northern Wind in Arizona, or Northern Arizona Wind and Solar did, uh, but I hear they don't do them anymore. So we're picking up where they left off. Um, so, and as you can imagine, they did a pretty good job. We're just uh, taking it to the next step here. So let's uh, do a recap on what we've been doing. JD, been, JD and I have been hard at work for about the last two days. And uh, let's start in the battery bay here. As you can see, there's these two giant six volt cells that are already in there. There used to be a slide out tray and six of these guys. We took two out because uh, this is not gonna be a 12 volt system anymore. We're going to a 24 volt system. And what we're doing for that is a custom battery. This is 840 amp hours at 24 volts. Double that if you wanna picture it in 12 volts. So 1600 amp hours or so, 1680. We got uh, shut off, disc or uh, shut off and fuse there already run. A shunt. Everything's just kind of laying all over because we haven't. We're just trying to get it going, and then we're going to clean it up before we uh, send this home. So we've already got this installed. It was kind of a beast. Uh, and this is a battery we've been making uh, on on occasion where they make sense. This is made out of 2020 aluminum. 3D printers are often made out of it, but this provides the compression. So this whole thing is under compression, keeping these cells nice and secure. And then uh, as you can see, we can use the mounting brackets or feet for that to mount that to the back wall. And then we just screwed right through the framing to mount it down there. <clears throat> and then we ran uh, Unistrut to support uh, on this bay. Now, in the next bay here, they, these Tiffins, they like to mount everything up on the ceiling, and that makes sense. You gotta save that space. These bays are actually electronically controlled. That's pretty cool. Northern Wind in Arizona, or Northern, whatever, that other place. <laughs> uh, they mounted most of this other stuff. We've added a couple of things. We added the 24 to 12 step-down converter and a servo. We've added that. And so we're in the process of hooking all that up. We already took out one inverter. We're gonna add another, or we gotta take this one out as well. JD's been at work prepping those. The way we're gonna mount those is gonna be a little bit interesting. Now the nice thing with these Tiffins is check this out. You got a nice open access channel for all the utilities. So running the wires that we need to run should not be a problem. <clears throat> oh, uh, as far as the specs on this system, uh, well, two charge controllers, 150 by 100s, and solar. Well, let's take a look here. So solar up here, we've got 3,640 watts. That's quite the solar. Almost as much as that bus back there. That's all right. This is a pretty nice ride. And you can see they did this all on a rack. Here, let's zoom in here a little bit more. And what I like about these racks is, well, one, you can put these giant panels up there and it protects all the stuff underneath here. All you utilities, if you like to boondock and get back in the trees a little bit and you're worried about the trees and stuff hitting all the stuff up there, it's not bad. It uh, protects everything, all your satellite stuff and all your vents, all that stuff. And they even still got, they kept room for the uh, Starlink up there. So basically, we are just finishing the upgrade here. Pretty nice solar system. All right, JD's been at work at this for the last 16 hours straight. Oh, at least. That's a joke. Woo! So tough. We've got uh, two of the inverters in here now. JD engineered this uh, Unistrut system. Well, I didn't engineer it. Well, the idea was from the inverter that was already installed here. Right. Which was really, really smart. Yeah, so it goes up, uh, up over top of the frame rails there and then uh, secures in here. And did some uh, aluminum L bracket or L channel, whatever. What do they call that? Uh, 
Brighty angle aluminum. Yeah, angle aluminum, I suppose. Oh, there we go, yeah. So that's there, and then uh, I went ahead and got the uh, two sets of 6.4 run here. We're gonna mount those boxes here. So I will uh, get out of JD's way here, but it is coming along. Goal is to have these uh, this customer under inverter and battery power tonight because they've been uh, having to sacrifice living on just a 20 amp without hybrid assist. And that is not fun. So we're inside now and trying to make uh, get the servo screen going. I got the HDMI and USB run up through the uh, bottom cabinet on the sink, and it was really nice. There were screws uh, to pull out the bottom and the side. And you can see I got a fish tape there. Now I tried pulling this up, and as you can see, that did not work. It's just too big. And you'll see why in a second here. This wall is extremely thin, and you've got blocking, so it's got to make a pretty tight turn. So now I'm deciding, I'm gonna try and run, uh, I put the fish tape down, I can really only get it to go down, I can't get it to come up. So uh, I'm gonna try and fish it all the way through and just pull the excess through using the uh, servo HDMI and data, or HDMI and USB line. So we'll see if that works. All right, so this is part of the job that isn't always fun, but I think I figured it out. So. Um, this whole panel on this uh, Tiffin Allegro bus is, it seemed pretty loose, so I just was curious how do we, you know, do you got to take this trim panel to get it out or what? But what it ended up working is I was just able to pop one side of this out and, uh, well, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to get the other side back in. And then that's going to allow us, you can see the blocking in here. It's tough to get anything through, but I think now I'm gonna be able to get it through without a problem. Uh, and actually, I don't even need the fish tape, really. So I'm gonna get that in there, and then I'll get this back in there, and we can get back onto the inverters and check in on JD. Huh, so if, I, if I'd have known that, it would have saved me about an hour's worth of trouble. Worked great. Uh, as you can see, I got that pop back in there. Uh, all you do, basically, is you just pull here, and this and just kind of pull on that side and it'll pop right out not a problem all right there we go not so bad nothing damaged i like it this isn't live yet it will be soon though well we worked hard last night and we got the power on for this customer let's take a look at where we're at jd's out here Cleaning things up, making it look pretty as best we can in that bay. Let's take a look here. Oh boy, these are a little sore today. Uh, yeah, we, we've got a couple of things left to go. Big thing is, uh, so we got the inverters here. Got covers to put on there, but we did all the work of landing all these, well we, JD did all that. Uh, landing all those cables in the sh what what was that you emotionally supported me i couldn't have done it without you <laughs> all yeah. right yeah and then uh yeah so we landed all those there and then uh he pre-measured all the wire runs so basically we didn't have to do a lot on our backs in here i hooked up these last night this is in and out so hey look sure coach so we'll put those covers on there we got a cover we got to get on here and then um, yeah it's just mainly button it up and load testing it all so you see this little dangly thing here the plan with this is to connect this to RVC which is where did that dongly thing go hopefully it's uh, it's one of these here. There it is. So this right here is the RVC connection. And uh, Victron publishes a pinout for this. I believe it's uh, 
uh, white, blue, black. The red is just power. So my plan was to clip this, keep this connector uh, in case he ever needs it again, and then strip it back a little bit and then connect, connect those in parallel with these lines. And that goes into the Serbo uh, VE CAN port. And when we set up the VE CAN port for R RVC, the two systems should start talking together. Uh, that system, or the Serbo, and then the Spider is up there. That's what this runs. And that's kind of the brains for it there. Along with that, we need to try and get automatic generator starting working. That's pretty critical for this customer, so that's the other thing we're gonna be tackling today. So in the uh, transfer case, or not the transfer case, uh, what is this thing called again? Transfer switch, there we go. Uh, we had to do something a little bit interesting here. Obviously we got our uh, mains coming in and out there, and forgive me, I already got the, the cover on here, but basically what you do is uh, their uh, shore power comes in on the bottom side, uh, generator comes this side on the back side of the two relays they parallel together and then it comes out to here and that goes to the panel what we do is we disconnect where this line comes in or comes out splice in our new line and then uh, connect the inverter uh, or no the inverter input goes to the back side of the transfer switch then the output of the inverter is spliced in in line with this and it goes to the panel and the coach is none the wiser. However, that's a problem with this connection right here. So this is a pretty smart coach and it has a uh, shore power monitoring with the spider monitoring control system. So we disconnected this because otherwise there would be some warning lights on the dash because shore power would be active all the time. And that's not what we're looking for. Now maybe there's a way around this well, you may notice we don't have the tiff in here anymore. What happened? Well, I'll tell you, um, we were just working hard on it and didn't really kind of forgot to record anymore. I, I do apologize about that. A uh, couple updates on some things that I don't think we got resolved, uh, at least on video, was uh, the RVC connection and the autogen start situation. Um, <clears throat> on the RVC side, we were able to get it connected to the system and it did partially work. Um, the only thing that really started working was the spider control system would deactivate the inverters and activate the inverters. However, on the Serbo GX side, uh, the device list kept refreshing and it never seemed to actually sync. So in the end, we ended up disabling it. I saw on the Victron community forums that someone else had been having a very similar issue with a Firefly control system. Uh, I believe Victron probably has a little bit of work to do on that to connect in with these systems or both of us are doing something wrong. If you know anything about that, I would love to hear from you down in the comments or email us. We definitely want to learn more about how to integrate the Serbo with the RVC uh, products because then you can get access to tank sensors, all of the data that's available. I think that's just so cool. Then on the Autogen start, we were kind of hoping maybe that would allow some connection between those two to have more options for Autogen start. However, in the end, we weren't able to get that part working on this trip. In the end, what we were gonna have to do was interface directly with the Onan generator using time delay relays. And we do have those. Uh, we're hoping to use that on a project here soon. Um, we would have to run lines from the servo through the body underneath the front wheels and into the generator bay. We're not quite there, but where the main controls are. Uh, probably would have been anywhere from another half day to a full day's worth of work that we just didn't have. But overall, uh, it was a great project. Uh, I think it's going to work out great for this customer. It's got a ton of uh, battery capacity now. Um, great coach. Very well put together. Uh, it was a joy to work on for the most part. So if you have anything like that or something bigger, something smaller, uh, doesn't matter. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, check us out at sodasolar.com. And also remember we are 
going to uh, be doing work in Arizona this year. JD has a property in Quartzsite, Arizona that uh, we'll be booking work for starting, work officially starting in January. Uh, we may have a couple of things lined up before then. We'll see. Um, but feel free to reach out to us about that as well. Thanks.